I haven't moved, have I? Um, okay, this is our genealogy video here on Parky's World. Now, I have several tips for you for ancestry and really other online genealogy. Um, Jeepers, girl. Sites that these may be applicable on. One, try to make sure, well, first of all, if you're using other people's trees, look and make sure that they have, you know, if you're taking information from them, that they have sources and records. If they have zero sources and zero records, move on. <laughs> um, As far as adding someone to your tree if you're new to it, there is a way to do it. There's a proper way to do it. And it frustrates me when it's not done right. Because it makes it harder to read. When you're adding a female, you add her maiden name only. Do you know how many times I have seen one of two things? Either a woman under her dad with her husband's name or with her husband's name and her father's name. Doesn't work that way in genealogy. You put the parents in, you list their kids, and they will be automatically given their father's name, male or female. Don't correct that. That's the way it's supposed to be. Then you click on her and you add her spouse. Her kids will be given his name. Unless her kids don't have his name, then you can manually change it. You know, like my grandmother's kids <coughs> had different men's last names. Um, I fixed my grandfather under the three girls as their stepdad and put their biological father in so that they have two different parent relationships. And one mom. So um and you can do that on Ancestry, which is so helpful. Um, another tip about how to write a person, how to put a person in your tree is dates. There's a proper way to put a date in a genealogy. And it's not all numbers, which I've seen them do. When I'm writing a date down quick on paper, I will write. Like my birth date, for example, 8474, you know, I'll write it that way. Or even August 4th, 1974, you know, AUG. In genealogy, you don't do it that way, okay? And God forbid, don't do it the European way, the UK way, because that's even more confusing. Because if you see it, and I've seen it, written out 0304. 1872. Well, guess what? That's not March 4th. That's April 3rd. So, but that's how they do it in the UK. Even in numbers. We don't do it that way. So, um, what we do, take my father's birthday. Well, the way that it's done in genealogy programs, the way that trees work, in case you've never done it, is dates work like this. 
You can take my father's birth date, okay? For APR, which is the abbreviation for April, 1944. That is how you write it. You write the day, you write either the whole month or the abbreviation for the month, and you write the year. Then you start writing in the place and it'll fill it in on most genealogy softwares and on Ancestry and some of the other ones. They will they'll fill it in for you. Um, well, they'll give you a list and you just click on it. Um, you kind of want... Eyes are all dried out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's allergy season. Anyway. Excuse me. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I also recommend that you put your DNA up on MyHeritage because they have more international DNA. Um, especially if you're like me and my grandfather was a first generation American. His parents came from Ireland. So I still have a lot of family in the UK <coughs> and Northern Ireland. Well, Northern Ireland's part of the UK. Um, so you would um, do it that way. I also recommend GEDmatch, FTDNA, which stands for Family Tree DNA, and DNA Solves. Um, let the police use your DNA. It's not a big deal. They just want to put a name to an unidentified person. Or solve a mystery of a missing person. You know? They're not looking to put you in jail. And they can't use it that way anyway. So. Um, another tip along the same lines of making sure there are sources. Um, don't be afraid to correct. Because they, I like that they now open the edit when you're adding new people um, from trees and stuff. They actually open the edit instead of just showing you and you have to click edit to fix it. They open that. So if I see a, made, uh, a married name, I can get rid of it. Remember that you can do floating trees, ghost trees where, like, I took a Burgess family in Connecticut that it seems to be thought that were uh, patient's parents, but I don't think her name was Burgess. And I made them as a ghost on the tree, which means that you put them in, you connect them, and then you disconnect them from the person, so they're just floating around in the tree. You can search for them, but they're not connected to anybody. I also have a separate entire ghost tree, um, a Dalzell tree, because I believe that's her name. And um, you can do that as well. And you want to look, because, and I have a few of these <laughs> that I have to fix, but you want to see that, especially if you're adding someone, if you've got Charles Johnson, and he was born in September of 1882, and you have a potential child for him, but they're saying the child was born in, you know, 1884. Mm, he didn't have a kid at two years old, you know, or worse yet, the kid was born in 1878. 
uh, father wasn't born yet, you know, stuff like that. So you have to, excuse me, oh, why did I do that? That was dumb. Anyway, um, make sure to remove those. And also, when you ow, change a name, like I had a wrong first name for someone. I think it was a middle name or something. And I changed it. They don't change your results in your hints. They should, but they don't. And so, beware of that. And in searches, if you know a middle initial, use it. Because it, it cuts down on the number of results that you get a little bit. Um, use enough information, but not too much information in your searches. You can also hit search in your tree if you're trying to fill in blanks on someone, but you may have to tweak that a little bit because it's going to put in everything you have in the search. And while it's nice that it writes it for you, you may have to edit it, like in a female's case, take out the married name, take out the spouse, so that you can get records of her before she was married. Something like that. Otherwise, it's going to give you all records under the spouse's last name. Um, as a maiden name in a lot of cases. So, I would definitely do that. Another reason not to include both names when you write someone in your tree And it is okay if you know, for instance, the surname of a woman's husband, but you can't find his first name for some reason. And I, I, I've had this happen. You simply write unknown as the first name and you write the last name. And hopefully, the more information you have about the woman, her hints will populate, and you'll see his first name, and you can replace the unknown with his name. Um, I think it's the 19, yeah, the 1900 census has month and year of birth. If you don't know an exact date of birth, but you have a year period, like you know who's born around this year, you, the proper way to do it is ABT, which is an abbreviation for about, period, and the year. That will help populate the hints as well. So, you will also notice when you're looking through trees, sometimes there's an arrow drop down at the name, at a date. Drop it down, look at it. Um, I will do that, particularly with a woman, again, if her married name is up there, drop it down. Oh, there's her maiden name. I don't have to go over here and re retype everything or, or delete that or whatever. Somebody else already did it correctly, you know, and under dates. Some people do different date formats, as I said. There's only one format that's acceptable in genealogy software. But, and I don't know how they get away with writing them in these weird formats, because it tells you right underneath it how you're supposed to write it as you're writing it. Um, so yeah. Drop down, just see what it says. And if you know your date is correct, don't change it just because someone else has a different date. I just changed one of mine because everyone had 
a date that I didn't have. Then when I went back and looked, wait a minute. No, mine came from a record. And I changed it back. <laughs> um, so you have to think about that. I, an example was um, Norma M. Bolton. People insisted that her maiden name was Emerson. My mother said, no way. And people really got aggressive with her about it. And finally, we find her obituary. Guess what? Her name was Embleton. So if you know something in your heart, don't change it for anybody else. Regardless of what they think. And remember to always talk to older people in your family. Try to get stories, names, and take notes for gosh sakes, take notes. I have notes. Interview with such and such a family member. Ugh. Anyway, um, interview with such and such a family member with names and things. They're not going to always give you dates. They can give you approximate time periods um, and you can get some interesting stories and you can get some names um, that you can look up and end up adding to your tree filling in blanks in your tree so I highly recommend that And if you can, go to family reunions and bring a notebook. <laughs> so, which I'm very much looking forward to. Again this year. I mean, I realize if you live in, I don't know, the UK and, you know, you moved to the UK or to some other foreign land and your reunion's in Michigan, you might not be able to make it. I get it. But yeah, I just think, oh, excuse me. At least that time I did it with the proper hand. Um, that those are all avenues to take advantage of for sure. And remember to look at free sites. Family Search is an invaluable tool. And it's completely free. Also, by the way, use your libraries. Libraries have access to sites, and some of them will give you in-home access with your library number to sites like MyHeritage. Ancestry, however, you have to go into the library to use. During the pandemic, they allowed home use. Um, My Heritage allows home use through your library card number. So check out your library. And check out your library to see what they have for digitized newspapers and things like that. And don't be afraid to get a digital library card from a big city near your, you know, that might have the, the local newspaper near your hometown. Whatever it is. I mean, they're completely free, so that is so hard to see. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to have to take a picture. They want me to take a picture of it. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this helps you. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll leave them in the comments or email me. Email in the description. And 
check out my tree on Ancestry. Wilson, Cox, Dyer, Mitchell, etc. <laughs> um, and connect up with me. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. God bless you. Okay.